needs to make his hair, please take the last yeah. opportunity. Now you are on stage. Very good, very good. Um, today we have another premiere in our Virtual Happy Hour 3.0, because for the very first time, it's not just one person presenting his country, we have two Swiss guys presenting uh, the country. So the country is so huge. There are so many things to tell that uh, two people are going to present. It's Daniel Friedeli and Jan uh, Alessi. So it's great that uh, we have a combined presentation. It's for the very first time. That's another premiere. I haven't seen the slides. So I'm also very eager to, to see all these things about chocolate and uh, how to um, yeah, how to hide your money in this country. So we expect some <laughs> nice hints um, what we can do in the future for our retirement. So the stage is yours, Jan and uh, Daniel. Switzerland. Do you think do you they will mention 1954? 1954, uh, uh, was it, um, was it when, no, that was too early that women could vote. That's, I think, was in the 70s, isn't it? It was in the 70s. Yeah. 78. Oh, 1954, you should remember that. The miracle of Bern. Ah, oh. yeah, you're right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so I think I expect to, to learn the differences between Saudi Arabia and Switzerland today. <laughs> Okay, um, I, I should be sharing, but I don't know if everybody can see the screen or not. Yeah, just go on presentation mode because then oh, we have full screen. Hang on, I am, but it's showing on my other screen. Just a second here. How do I change this? Um, wait, I can view you slideshow. Huh. I don't know. No, take, um, no, take this button. Take this button, which is next to the hundred percent slider there. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it, but it, it, it goes, yeah. But it's going best. on my second screen. Oh, there we go. Now it should be okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, usually, usually we start the session that the presenters have to sing the national anthem of their country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no I'm standing up already in an anticipation. <laughs> All right. John, do you have started. Swiss beer today, Marco? Do I have what? Swiss beer? No, it's Greek beer. Good. John, do you yeah. want to start? Go ahead. I will start. Then we go. Um, or maybe uh, here you see a typical picture of Switzerland, uh, uh, which uh, you might think, well, that's just for the postcard, but <laughs> they, uh, it looks like that in real. And um, Switzerland, of course, it's uh, also known as uh, Confederatio Helvetica. Let's say that's, that's the official name. Uh, um, and uh, for sure, we have some information not put in this presentation for compliance reasons. So everything which is about money and everything. So please ask those questions and uh, yeah, then we will share most information we can do. Yeah, Once starting maybe... The recording. Yeah, <laughs> we just peep it out then. Yeah, let's start with uh, with the introduction of both of us, um, and I yeah I go for it. So uh, as you see, my actual picture <laughs> looks uh, quite uh, like myself. Okay. You're cheating. Well, of course, um, yeah, a little bit cheating. Yeah, of course, that's Scott Spencer. <laughs> I put that in because. Um, yeah, it's it's one of my idols, and uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I, uh, seen every film, uh, um, eating like him. Uh, so yeah, Spencer is one of the famous Swiss people in the world. <laughs> exactly, almost. Yeah, not so far <laughs> away. So yeah, I'm. Uh, I have one wife. Uh, I don't know what, what you have, uh, and one daughter, which is uh, now becoming uh, five in June. Uh, like Daniel, I have also a double citizenship, uh, being a Swiss national and Italian national. So I was born as an Italian, uh, half Italian, half Spanish. My father is from Sicily. My mother is from Tenerife, so two islands. And uh, born also in Switzerland, which is also an island in the middle of Europe. Uh, and I'm uh, living, uh, continuing to live in Basel. 
I have been my whole life in the cargo, on the cargo side of, uh, of, of the business, uh, where I started as a freight forwarder. I then joined Air France KLM, or I started, let's say, at the KLM group, uh, which then merged, as you know, to the Air France KLM group. And uh, I've been there for a total uh, 10 years. And since 2012, I work for the airport of Basel Mulhouse, the, the only B national airport in the world. I say B national in the sense of that the airport is uh, state owned and it belongs 50% to the French government and 50% to the Swiss government. And the airport is completely on uh, French ground. So when it comes to um, everything which is related to regulations, etc. It's the French regulations, which is uh, leading. However, uh, it's mostly used by Swiss people, uh, also German people and, and French people. And therefore, there has been in 1946 a treaty, uh, or a, a treaty has been established, where the conditions and the, the, the rules have been uh, yeah, written down how to be used uh, uh, this airport. And the story may be just to close off uh, my introduction. The story behind this airport is that Basel had a little airport at that time and they needed to grow, but they had no space. And on the French side, they had space, but no need of an airport. And this is how then uh, in, uh, 19, in the 1940s, um, they came to this kind of deal, whereas the French said, well, okay, we, we put our ground uh, uh, to be built here, the, the airport, and, and you and you will handle the airport, you will build it, you will invest in it. At the beginning, indeed, it was like only being a Swiss airport. And afterwards, when uh, yeah, when things grow, also French got involved, and this is why now it's really belonging 50-50. So yeah, that's from uh, from my side, and I hand over to Daniel. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm based in Zurich, which, which is actually quite interesting because Zurich and Basel have quite a rivalry in almost everything you can think of. Um, of course, Zurich is the nicer city and has the better soccer team and, 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 um, so, <laughs> I mean, good I got the second part of this in. Um, I have, I've got three kids, although two of them aren't at home anymore. One's moved out, one's in the army, and the other one is still here. Um, and I've enjoyed actually the last two, three months because I've been able to go out and go biking and hiking and everything. We've had stunning weather even and, and stunning weather and no work. So that's that's ideal. Um, I work for Travel in Motion, a small consulting company that I founded a couple of years ago, about five years ago. And we mainly focus on um, distribution, e-commerce and passenger reservations and those kind of things. Um, before that, I worked for Swiss Air, Swiss, and and some of the vendors that then took over some of the leftover Swiss Air left as they as they were doomed. Um, so Giancarlo and I are going to split this presentation up a little bit. I'm going to talk about some topics, and then I'll hand over to to him again, and we're just going to go back and forth a bit like this. So first off, some general info about Switzerland. Um, Yes, our, our flag is a square. It's not a rectangle. Um, there's very few occasions where actually a rectangular flag is allowed to be used. Uh, one of them is in sports events like the Olympics. Um, they actually fly a rectangular square, but our square, our, our flag is a square. Um, the only other country that shares that is, is the, the state of the Vatican City. Um, as Giancarlo said before, uh, Switzerland is an island in the middle of Europe. Um, as you can see here, uh, we've got all those EU countries uh, around us um, and we're just not part of it. Um, we border five countries, uh, Germany, Italy, France, Austria and Liechtenstein. Um, we Although we aren't part of the EU, we are part of the Schengen area. So we're pretty much European border free. Uh, we can walk into any of our neighboring countries um, without a problem at all, usually. Um, it's a little bit different now. Um, 
We're a small country. We're tiny, 41,000 uh, square kilometers, which is 16,000 square miles. I think we're we're about the size of of the smaller of the U.S. states. Um, we're bigger than the smallest ones, but smaller than everything else. North to south, um, Switzerland is only 220 kilometers, so 140 miles. East to west, uh, 350 kilometers, um, 220 miles. So you can easily drive from one end to the other in a day and back. Um, except that you probably hit a lot of highways that are just so congested because we have too many cars for, for our highways. Um, and you might might hit a radar and um, be fine for speed, speed oh yes and that's very expensive um i was actually going to put that in as a fun fact but i didn't but our our speeding fines when you get over a certain limit not the sort of standard ones but when you get over a certain limit our speeding fines are dependent on your income um which which can hurt um yeah but the biggest problem to be honest is being a german driver are the swiss drivers around us so that's really when you drive through switzerland you have a lot of obstacles because i have always the fear the swiss drivers they cannot really manage their car <laughs> <laughs> of I, course I, it's, it's, I, I have a consolation for you it's getting even worse because the dutch with their camping wagon it's even the worst but then second place is switzerland already I was going to say it gets worse the further south you go. I find it <laughs> remarkable. We're, we're ten minutes. We're, it took us ten minutes to start taking the piss out of each other. Um, <laughs> normally, normally we start earlier on, but fair enough. Well, perhaps a bunch of warm up. Got somebody from Basel on the call. When you drive down the A5 actually towards Switzerland, you don't have any speed limit until the border actually. But out of Switzerland on the same motorway on the other side, there is a speed limit because they don't want the Swiss to speed on the German motorways. Which they do anyways. I mean, the yes. Swiss are driving like madmen. I was going to say, it the is. Swiss are probably worse than the Germans in Germany. Yeah. It's like it's, it's like cheaper. you've been deprived of alcohol for too long, then you, you overdo it. And it's the same with your driving. Speed limit all your life, and then once you're in Germany, boom. That's right. So if I may if I may add, I think you 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 don't have a problem with with high and huge uh, fines and tickets for speeding. You have a problem not being able to bribe a police officer like normal. <laughs> <laughs> right? Of course, we would we would we would never dare to 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 bribe a police officer. Um, we 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 prefer to pay half of our yearly salary and fines. Yes, and 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 if you drive fast enough, they'll even take your car. And Zoran, this call is monitored for quality assurance. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, as I said, in normal countries, you just you just you just say, hey, can we? agree this like in other terms and, uh, and, and then you negotiate and eventually you settle with like 20 euros well you're in normal you're countries to cry when you come and visit here <laughs> no, um, <laughs> so lastly before i move on switzerland um while we're not part of the eu or the whole um eurozone in terms of the currency we do take a lot of the EU laws um, It's sort of a political compromise so that the EU kind of likes us, but we don't have to give them all of our money. We kind of agree on some of the rules that they give us. Um, we have a population of about eight and a half million people and we have four official languages. Um, Switzerland was founded in 1291. And we've got 16 cantons, which other people would call states or provinces. And um, the 16 or 26, because you have uh, written 26. 26. Okay, just to confirm. And yeah. is, is there still one state where women cannot vote, or meanwhile every woman can no, vote? No, every women can vote everywhere now. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like, all, think, like all women, all women, or just some? <laughs> well, with women. <laughs> you got it all wrong. You shouldn't have introduced the speed limit, and you should. Well, 
<laughs> Don't just you better stop there. It's gonna go south otherwise. But that was my fault. Sorry. <laughs> Our capital city is Bern. Um, a lot of people think it might be Zurich, but Zurich is just the biggest city. Um, Zurich itself has five percent of the whole Swiss population. The other big cities are Basel, uh, Geneva, Bern, of course. Probably the most popular city might be Lucerne out of a tourism perspective. Um, the most popular sports, although John Carnell will talk about those, soccer, skiing, tennis, hockey, and a bunch of other ones. Um, the four official languages are obviously German, French, and Italian. And the fourth one is Romanche, which is spoken by about 0.5% of the population in the very east of the country. The most spoken language is German with about 65% and then French, then Italian. It's just funny what you perceive as German, but OK. <laughs> <laughs> Swiss German. It's a big German, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so one thing about Switzerland is we have a very, very direct democracy. We vote on everything all the time. So if you want to wear blue underwear tomorrow, we have to vote on it. And if you want to I don't know. We, we vote on everything. Um, we, we don't really have a single prime minister or president. We've got seven little dwarves sitting, uh, sitting in <laughs> Bern. Um, they're all equal from what they can say. They all have a different area of responsibility. So military and sport and foreign affairs and whatever. But actually, they're all equal. Um, one of them is what we call the primus inter pares more or less the speaker of those that changes every year. Currently, our um, our group of seven little dwarves are three women and four men, and they represent four political parties. We've got very many political parties. We probably have about, I don't know, eight maybe bigger-ish parties, and then regionally we've got tons more. But we've got four main political parties that are in the in the what we call the Bundesrat, the seven little dwarves. Um, our democracy lets us vote <clears throat> typically three or four times a year. And every time we've got anywhere between, I don't know, I would say five and 15 different topics to vote on. Some of them are for the whole country. Some of them are for the canton that you live in. And some of them are very local for the, the town that you live in or the city that you live in. So it's, it's a lot of voting that we do. Um, Daniel. Yes, maybe maybe to add because uh, this is a story I always share with uh, someone because it's an unbelievable story. I, I think it's one or two years ago when we voted, we were really asked the whole Swiss population were asked to vote about if cows, a cow, should keep their horns or not. <laughs> and then because. You have have you consulted in India before? Because the holy cow is also important in India. So how the Indians are dealing with that? With or without? No, no, but I, I give you now the background in, in, in a nutshell. Because this was brought up by uh, a farmer. Because uh, in Switzerland, uh, most of the farmers, uh, they um, take away the horns. Uh, because the horns um, might be also a little bit dangerous uh, to endanger the other cows and for yourself. So this farmer said, well, I feel that when a cow has no horns, she is more depressed. She doesn't feel well. She doesn't give um, enough milk. So I want to have the cows to feel, um, to feel better. And the Swiss government should give some, uh, let's say, um, some uh, financial support in order to uh, allow the cows to keep their horns. Because if you have the horns, you need more space, you need more, so everything is a little bit more costly. So these are the kind of problems we have here in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 is very, that is very true. I mean, we, we, it's, sometimes it's very ridiculous. I mean, sometimes I, in our town last year, we had a vote on what kind of a sculpture should be put into the middle of a roundabout. I mean, that's just crazy. But it's first yeah. one problem. But they're nonetheless genuine problems. Yeah, well, it's a democracy. I mean, it's not like our banana republics. 
Um, but I also enjoyed very much, sorry, I also enjoyed very much that discussion that one of your Bundesrate, Rate, Rate had in Parliament, I believe, on the, um, the um, ingredients and what artificial or not, no, what actually uh, you can add to Bündnerfleisch for it to still be called Bündnerfleisch. There's a hilarious video on YouTube about that guy who's a de deadly serious senior politician reading out some legislative text and in the end he can't hold his own laughter and he bursts out laughing about his own nonsense that he's talking. Uh, we, we almost had a whole identity crisis a few years ago when when it was almost forbidden to to make our most famous sausage because of we we couldn't import the um what is it called um uh we couldn't import the whatever skin stuff that you put a sausage in from Argentina or wherever we were importing it from anymore because of some new EU law and 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 which would have meant we can't make our sausage our typical sausage the whole country was in uproar about not being able to make our Swiss typical sausage ah uh, yeah problems we have <laughs> um so in Switzerland, you know, we get old and we travel a lot or old people travel a lot. Um, our life expectancy, 83.4 years, second only behind Japan. Women, of course, get older than men um, just because they hit us a lot and then we, we die earlier. Um, in, in Switzerland, the average person travels about 2,400 kilometers per year on, on the train alone. We've got trains going everywhere. Um, above the ground and under the ground and and to almost every little town um, where we don't have a train. We've got an extensive bus network taking you to the littlest places that you wonder why people actually go there. Um, yeah, kind of crazy, but but we, it is a very good public transportation system. It's maybe not quite cheap for for tourists when they come and visit. Um, and we have a unique education system where um, not going to university is actually a good thing. Um, that That's my son. Um, and we've got what we call a dual education system where young people, when they're around 15, 16, they've got to decide, do they take the vocational education path or do they plan on going to university um, in uh, as the next step after sort of the junior high school level? And two thirds of the youngsters um, go actually the vocational route. And we have, we've got over 300 professions and that's everything from working in a bank or a travel agency or at airlines or airports um, in, in uh, chocolate factories, uh, making jewelry, anything you can think of almost, except things like lawyers and doctors, which you can take through that profession. So. Two thirds of our of our, our youngsters actually go down that route and and um, do that, including uh, carpentry, mason work, all those kind of things. And those do they, get, they get a sort of a qualification out of that, a, they, a recognised qualification. They, they do. Um, unfortunately, it's recognised only in Switzerland, but but they do. And and when they're finished with their program, they're basically they get full employment in very many cases at the company that they did their their apprenticeship at. Um, and so with with in my daughter, for example, she started when she was 16. She was finished when she was 18. And when she was 19, she had a full salary is fully integrated into the workforce. Right. And um, so that's a it's a very common program and it's it's well liked. Yeah. Unfortunately, so, uh, yeah. sorry. Uh, sorry, just uh, uh, wanted to clarify. So it means that not the big percentage of people are going to university or higher education. It's just uh, something that is common in uh, Switzerland. Yeah. So so exactly. So um so so two thirds take this VET path and do an apprenticeship mm -hmm. in some kind of a profession. One third goes on towards the pure educational path of university. Um. Now, the the ones that did the VET program, they will very often do further education afterwards. So some of them will then decide, oh, now I want to go to university. 
So they've got their aptitude tests that they have to do and they can go to university or they can go to a technical college or or whatever. Um, but many of them will just continue working on the job that they learned as whatever carpenter, mace, stonemason, uh, banker, travel agent, and mm -hmm. just keep working that way for the rest of their lives in some cases. Okay, so because, uh, well, it, that's interesting because I had some experience also with Swiss, uh, Swiss and um, I understood that not so many people were really um, univ university qualified because they were looking for many for many other people around the world, especially in uh, Europe. And uh, for example, I I was chosen among many Swiss guys uh, for a, for a job for a position which I thought it was really interesting because they wanted somebody to speak German, let's say German, Swiss German. Uh, and uh, in this case, I speak German, but not as good as I should, because I haven't practiced. I mean, I understand it very well, but it's not yet good enough to go to to the field, let's say. Okay, but I mean, I understand everything and that's it. But I need to practice. And I I'm, I mean, I had three, four, five directors and I was chosen and would pay me the relocation and everything. And I said, what the hell? This is very strange because uh, are there not Swiss people in, uh, in, that are qualified for this position? This was something that make you know made me think. And now, when you think that, uh, I understand that probably because two thirds of the people in in Swiss they just go to another direction, and may probably uh, later on they decide to progress and go to the university to a certain area. But until then. They will do not do that because probably they don't need. They have enough uh, job positions and job offerings and salaries and everything. So probably that's the reason. Because I was yeah. quite yeah. kind of um, uh, you know a little bit astonished, but uh, you know uh, that's why. <laughs> because they said, okay, we give you three months. We know that you understand German. We know we can pay you everything, and you learn German as fast as you can. Because you speak French, you speak English, you speak uh, Spanish, Portuguese, whatever, and we can give you everything. But come, come and work with us. You know that was for me uh, because this is not happening in, in in my country, for example. This is something like okay, you are overqualified, but we don't care. We don't give you a job. You know, a quite different uh, position. So it is it's interesting to to exchange this kind of. Uh, um, culture and idea and uh, how it's working in, in every country. It's very interesting to understand that as well. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, sorry for my long no, speech. That's fine. I think one of the problems we have is is we you know in many areas we lack we lack uh, people just because I mean our unemployment is very low. It's it's two point something percent, right? So there's just there's there's not enough people to do all of the work, especially if anything gets a little bit more specialized. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we are we are dependent on on many other people from other countries for a lot of work. But for example, what I understand is that you also are quite um, not very reasonable with people that are over fifty four, even if they are of a very good qualifi uh, qualification. Because um. the. <laughs> Be, you know, because of this uh, typical situation that uh, the, the employers have to pay more for the site and for everything. This is, yeah, the whole social security yeah. and everything gets more expensive. Yeah, um, I, yeah I, I don't know if we're, I mean, I, I don't know what Giancarlo thinks. I don't think we have a big unemployment problem with people that are 55 or, or above, actually. I, I, our, I think our bigger challenge is with, with young people um, that that might not have have found the right path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I fully I fully agree. I mean, uh, you hear it more often, of course, and of course it is a little bit more difficult to find a job, and it depends, of course, of your qualifications mm -hmm. after you 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 have passed the fifty five. But there has been studies showing that uh, at the end of the day. It's not really a big issue, and there, there is not really a big problem uh, that there is a big unemployment rate for people over 55. Okay. So the statistics shows that there is no big issue, but okay. of course, uh, okay. you, 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 you read very quick in medias about 
people uh, not having been able to find a job for for whatever reason then yeah yeah well i'm just uh, saying that because uh, i have a friend there and she's having a trouble and she has been there for 12 years uh and she's 54 and she has i don't know a master degree and and she's uh, an engineer and everything and she has been uh, having some trouble. That's why I was trying to understand if there's something, uh, I don't know, well, but maybe it's because okay. it's, uh, <laughs> it's not able to, to convince. <laughs> I think it's always uh, depending on, yeah, in, in which of course. branch of course. are this you working. No, yeah. yeah, this is data analytics and everything. So it's something that is very needed and the artificial intelligence. That's why I wonder, what, well, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's her. <laughs> the problem is on her. <laughs> I just have a colleague who left our company. She's sixty. She's sixty, and she went for uh, for another job, and uh, she was employed. And no problem. Because they were okay. looking for her skills. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, yes, we do have mountains and cows and chocolate and watches. And we beautiful, have, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, I, I love them. Yeah. We have 48 peaks that are over 4,000 meters and over 1,000 that are over 3,000 meters and 2,000 and something that are over 2,000. By 2, the way, meters. I forgot to ask, did everybody get his bar of chocolate? Because that's part of the presentation that the presenters are sending um, something from their country to the audience. <laughs> no, I didn't. Ah, I can't ah, pay mine. It's no problem. You can resend. It's no problem. Yeah, yeah, I, I think they've all melted because it's such beautiful weather and hot here. It's all melted. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, I got mine. Our, our got, most got famous chocolate from Giancarlo's is... family from Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> our, our most famous chocolate is Linton Springley, although there's there's many others and there's even older ones. They were founded in 1879. Um, on average, the, sweet, the Swiss people eat about 11 kilos per year, which is about 24 pounds. So we do, we do kind of like chocolate. Um, we produce over 100, 185 tons. 65% of that is exported, which means we actually eat all of the rest of it, which is pretty disgusting, isn't it, now that I think about it? <laughs> um, yeah. With that, Giancarlo, I'm going to hand over to you to talk about Swiss culture. All right. So let's go. So what we can say is that in general, you have heard uh, that we have 26 cantons, but uh, within these cantons, we even have uh, different mentalities, different cultures when you go uh, city to city. And uh, what we can say is that you will find different culture. In Basel, for instance, what you see here uh, in the background, the inner city of Basel, Rhine swimming is very popular. And every summer, and it will start now in these days, when the Rhine will become around um, 20, 19, 20 degrees, uh, people will start to jump in until the la very last possible day in uh, September, um, yeah, in order to swim. And there are thousands and thousands of, uh, of people getting into the Rhine, uh, including uh, myself. But of course, and then we get to the next slide, there are also culturally seen common interests. And you see here a picture of uh, the carnival. So carnival is one of those events, a big event, which is um, in mostly in many parts of Switzerland. Uh, uh, yeah, um, one of the high, high, uh, high events. And this year there was a big, yeah, big discussion when about, or for the reasons of Corona, they dismissed the carnival. Um, that was a big uh, bang uh, within, within all the people, because as you can see here, imagine having, uh, with the Corona crisis, having had the carnival with uh, in Basel, for instance, there are always more than uh, 200,000 uh, visitors per day coming in to celebrate. It's a three days event, three full days. Uh, people take holiday to, to participate. There are a lot of active people doing the carnival. So uh, I think uh, afterwards, uh, it was a good decision to dismiss uh, 
the carnival this year in uh, in all of Switzerland. What's happening with if, the tourist free parade? It was also dismissed this year. <laughs> I bet. Which is uh, almost one million people. Right? It's one of yeah, exactly. The biggest, it's really biggest event in in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, it's always a sh yeah, it's always a pity uh, not to being able uh, to to yeah to go for. And there are a lot of other uh, like in everywhere the festivals and uh, uh, big events in general. But I think it it was reasonable decisions to do that for this year. So we go to the next slide. I mean, probably when you hear Switzerland and you hear about food, uh, uh, then you always think of chocolate, of course, but also of cheese. Um, actually, we also have different kind of uh, dishes uh, and it's interesting uh, how it varies depending on which zone you are, because when you're more in the Italian part of Switzerland, it becomes a little bit more Mediterranean when you're in the in the northern part it's also typical uh, or different than when you're in the uh, french part of switzerland so it's it's also a little bit adapting to it like the police cars whereas in the swiss part of uh, of uh, or in the german part of switzerland uh, you drive uh, rather um, german cars in the uh, eastern part or in the french part you drive uh, rather french cars so uh, the mentality of course of the swiss people is also a little bit related to the country which is next uh, next to him. But of course, you see uh, cheese uh, fondue, you see cheese raclette. Um, Daniel said it before, the sausages, uh, uh, which which here on the left picture, you see with an onion sauce, very famous, and I'm getting quite hungry right now because I had no food yet, just drinks. So um, yeah, there is, uh, this are a little bit the uh, Alpe Macronen, which you see on the uh, below part of the picture. And of course, we drink also a lot of wine and a lot of beer. We, we are fo famous for that one too. But I think everybody of you, or most of you probably have heard about Rivella, and uh, especially the Rivella red label, which is given to pregnant women uh, because this helps to produce uh, milk. Is that urban myth or is that true? Mm, no, there is kind of milk serum in uh, in the Rivella, which apparently is stimulating the production of milk. Uh. So, but what does it do to the men? <laughs> well, you can imagine that. It can one. help you make milk. <laughs> <laughs> Another type of milk. Anyway, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, sport activities we love. You might think of Roger Federer and then thinking, well, uh, everyone is playing tennis here in Switzerland. Of course, uh, since uh, the times of Roger Federer, um, uh, we also have been, myself also, uh, much more affin to, to tennis. And I, I started actually to, to be interested more in tennis when, uh, when, when Roger Federer uh, became, uh, let's say, uh, famous or became um, successful in tennis. However, and uh, sorry that I didn't translate that one, the most liked uh, sport activities uh, for people between 15 and 74 is, uh, first of all, uh, hiking. So go to the, go to the, go to the mountains. It's uh, bicycling, it's swimming, it's uh, skiing, it's uh, choking, it's uh, fitness and uh, aerobics in general, gymnastic. Football is only, yeah, on the seventh or eighth place. Dancing, walking, and, and also tennis, it's not one of the yeah, biggest. Uh, but this is a little bit the ranking. It's the, from the last statistic, which was done in 2014. So this is why it's, there is no actual, but we do also um, this kind of... Uh, statistics about looking what kind of people is liking which kind of sport but so of course this is a little yeah isn't better like old and retired and loses to Djokovic every time well uh, <laughs> ouch ouch <laughs> this has to come. I, th I think I think you are not a big Roger Federer fan I believe no, but uh, I have to. I think I think he's totally impartial to him. 
<laughs> it's just stating the obvious. <laughs> no, I think he's doing great, and he's shown what how great he he still is, and uh, for his age and. Uh, uh, five, six, seven years ago, people already said, well, you, he should retire. And he came back and he came back as the number one. Of course, there are many players, uh, great players. Uh, the Joker is one of those. Uh, and, and for sure, he will not remain at this level for many years. So I think he will probably play one or two more years. And then uh, he, ha he had his time. But uh, of course, he, he, he will never be forgotten uh, when it's about uh, tennis. But uh, for Talking which about uh, Swiss watch, here is the testimony, Federer. Is Sorry, Dan, a, can is you repeat? Is he not a testimony for a for Swiss watch? His testimony for many things, including uh, coffee machines, including uh, mobile phone, or um, not mobile phone provider, but... but for, um, which, for which watch he is the testimony? Oh. Uh, I think it's for Alex, isn't it? Could 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 well be. I actually not but quite Alex sure. Alex is not Swiss watch, isn't it? No, Alex is Swiss. Sure. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's Geneva. From Geneva. Of course. But Come on, every watch yeah, is coming is. from Switzerland. <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it, it is. It is a Chinese one. <laughs> Look, Gian, my watch. Was, was, my watch is Stefan from the China. <laughs> So, yeah. Giancarlo, so just for our talking. German friends, he's, he, Mercedes Benz is also one of his big sponsors. Mm. True. Hey, Giancarlo, yeah, you were saying that Carlos III is still lacking behind a bit. Yeah? <laughs> Giancarlo, you yeah, were saying that yeah. that that uh, Federer won't be forgotten in ten years, and and that just reminded me, who was the most famous mountain hiker that you have in Switzerland? <laughs> I forgot that. Uli Steck. <laughs> yeah, Uli Steck. You don't know Uli? Who's, who's, Uli. He, who's he's been sponsored by? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Is it like a world series of mountain hiking? <laughs> like the, the US Open of <laughs> hiking? <laughs> There, there no, probably isn't it? is. It's, it's probably called trail running. It's Marco, I, 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 I take your comment. Uh, I take your comment, Mark. Also, uh, by understanding that you are also not a big um, Roger Federer fan. <laughs> no, no. Actually, I I admire him. Um, but I, to be honest, if I had a choice between Nadal, Federer, and Djokovic, uh, my um, ranking would be. The Joker followed by Federer followed by Nadal. Nadal just gets on my nerves with his ticks of doing yeah. the ear thing, and I agree. Oh, all the three are great players, I said, uh, and of yeah. course I a little bit more towards Roger Federer because first being Swiss, but he's also from Basel, so um, there's a little bit more um, closeness uh, than uh, yeah with Nadal or with uh, Joker. But all the three for me are. Top players, all the three. So, but yeah, when it comes to, let's say, typical uh, Swiss sport activities, even some of those you just see maybe in some uh, on some countryside uh, or in, in some uh, mountain villages like uh, Hornussen. But of course, there's Schwingen, which is a kind of uh, wrestling. And um, the fun thing uh, about uh, wrestling or the, the Schwingen, as we say uh, in uh, Switzerland, is that uh, as a prize you will win a cow and you will take the cow home with or without horns <laughs> uh, well at the moment you can choose <laughs> no no it's no, no, it's, uh, it's it's a cow and um, yeah some of them they have no space some of them are farmers so they keep it and those who have no space they make uh, as daniel said our famous uh, sausages out of it so <laughs> Hornelson, it's something else. It's very special. Uh, myself, I never had the opportunity to do some uh, Hornelson. However, it's a kind of, um, you see the man in the, on the top one, he has a kind of, um, yeah, a stick, uh, which he's using to draw a kind of stone. Uh, it, it, looks, it looks a little bit like um, on ice hockey, the buck. And uh, then he's thrown away 
in, uh, in, 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 in the middle of the field. Uh, that's the picture below you see. And um, yeah, they try to, like in baseball, to grab, uh, to grab this, this, this puck or this, this kind of stone. And uh, don't ask me uh, what, they, uh, what they win, uh, but this is a little bit this typical um, yeah, Swiss uh, sports event. And the Hornosen, the history of that one is that um, uh, formerly Swiss people used uh, um, used to have kind of wooden uh, wooden pieces which they started to burn and they drove them down from the mountains uh, in order to uh, uh, send away the 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 the, the, the ghosts uh, the bad ghosts so yeah uh, somehow it turned to be then Hornos and don't ask me why and how it, how this can happen. So, is, it, um, is golf popular in Switzerland? Uh, it's getting more and more, but um, yeah, it's not yet as popular as you would say. I, I will find you know, in, in, in every corner uh, a golfer, but it's getting more and more uh, popular for sure. Okay. Uh, and it's still quite an elitist sport here. I mean, it's very expensive to play golf here still. I was just thinking, because of all the beautiful countryside, you know, I bet the courses would look stunning. Yeah, except we don't have any space. We're so okay. small. I guess. <laughs> yeah, now I hand over to Daniel. Thank you. So we've got five fun facts about Switzerland. Um, everything else before that was obviously boring. That's why these are fun. No, just kidding. Um, but... Um, we've talked about cows quite a bit. There's actually one cow for every five people in Switzerland. So we've got about 1.6 million cows um, in in Switzerland. Um, and in spring, the cows are led up to the Alps to graze from, from down in the towns and in the villages. And in autumn, they're brought back down. This very traditional event where they put all these nice traditional clothes on um, that you see with the goats at the bottom. Um, and they put all these flowers and bells and all that kind of stuff. But you also see some of the treacherous and difficult paths and even stairs that the cows have to climb to get up to their to their Alps um, to, to graze. Kelvin, I have a question. How many cows are there in India? Do you know the figure? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but there are millions like, like this. <laughs> but maybe on the road as well, yeah? That, that's <laughs> yeah uh, yeah but if the ratio is the same five people in switzerland 1.6 million so it, let's say one cow per five indians there's a lot of cows in india huh? yes Maybe. yes it's a sacred sacred animal yes. yeah um the next one is i guess they they keep telling us we're happy because um, we're always in the top five of the World Happiness Index and the Global Livability Index and the Quality of Living Survey and, 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 and. So we're apparently very, very, very happy people. Um, and it's apparently very, very nice to live here. What they, what they keep hiding, though, is that we do have, actually, we do have quite a high suicide rate in Switzerland. Um, and it's one of the few countries where you're actually allowed to have yourself killed if you don't want to live anymore. Hmm. And so, this country is called Fun Facts, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I didn't put that part on the slide. <laughs> and, and I have to say, sorry to say, but the virtual happy hour was invented in Germany, not in Switzerland. Of course, of course. With all respect, you deserve for that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Um, we, we're a land full of lakes. We've got over 1,500 lakes. You're never further than 16 kilometers or 10 miles away from a lake in Switzerland. And we use a lot of those lakes to, to generate our, our electricity. Um, so 60% of our electricity comes from hydroelectric power. Um, a little bit of it comes from our two or three remaining um, reactors that we have. And the rest we import from Germany and France. Um, but we do have very clean water fountains and drinking water. So you can drink most of the waters coming out of public fountains, these old traditional fountains. In Zurich alone, just in the city, there's over 1,200 of these drinking fountains. 
And when you go hiking in the mountains, like you see on the big picture, there's there's fountains everywhere, and you can just drink all of that water without any worry, usually. And we still have a compulsory military service um, for men. Women can go if they want to, uh, but it's not compulsory. The minimum that you have to do is roughly, what is it, 11 months of service in total. Um, and that can be all at once or it can be spread over several years. one time just because of the our recruitment system is it true that everybody is allowed to have a gun in switzerland or am i just related okay. to that um taking care of the pope so they have nothing to do with them oh. um the swiss guard does have 135 soldiers um only and you have to be swiss you have to be catholic you have to be unmarried you have to be male and you're not allowed to have a criminal record and you have to have done service in the swiss army first before you're allowed to join the swiss guard so it's a little bit so like a religious sect then it is it is it is um and you typically serve down in rome for two to three years and and then and then you're done and, so and you have forty thousand soldiers less than germany it's incredible because the german bundeswehr has 184 soldiers only wow yeah it, and it, it you know it's surprising because of the military system in switzerland we actually have i think 1.3 million people in reserves at all at any given time because most of us swiss people now i'm, I'm too old but and, and i could usually hand your stuff in when you're 35 but most of the Swiss men up until 35 are weaponized at home, right? We've got our, our rifle or whatever down in the basement locked up somewhere. We've got a, a can of ammunition and we can be pulled in. And we did this during the coronavirus. Actually, we activated some of the military service to go and help. And actually it's to defend all our gold. Exactly. And, and the cows potentially, the cows. And, chocolate. The, <laughs> and the chocolate. But I wonder how many, how many unmarried Catholic Swiss male men without criminal record are left outside of the Swiss Guard? <laughs> well, none. Those are all of them. That's why it's only 135 people. And what means then married? Does it mean they are single or uh, yes. divorced? You're not, or they, no, you're not, or not divorced. divorced. Unmarried not divorced. means you haven't ever married yet. Okay, so, so single. Did you virgin to join the Vatican? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> I don't know. But Fatima, think, how is the system in Portugal, by the way? Is the same same? About what? The military. The, the, the service the military, military, uh, military ser uh, service, you mean? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, here uh, women and the men, they can join uh, without any problem. So we have a lot of women, uh, Port uh, Portuguese women already in the, in the military service. Yeah. And with very high patents already. Even the, when one of the NATO commanders in the Air Force is a Portuguese uh, woman as well, so 35 years old, something like that. So we have many people, many women already in the in the in the in the army, but it's not mandatory. I mean, people go if they want. I just checked the UK. I think the British Army has got 79,000, so a lot less. Hmm. Yeah, 79,000 well, only. Yeah. No, come on. Well, we're probably going to... Now we're, now we're not part of the EU. We've probably got to increase that number just to sort of protect our hey, Come on, you go to every war. The US our guys are calling. You have to... Yeah, have but you also, I mean, you also need to look at the percentage. I mean, I think the British army is a bit bigger than the Portuguese army, so it's even less, I assume. Mm. Oh, Phil, but you have only 9,000, then I would say, let's join forces and invade the islands there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's maybe why we've got such a big army because we're actually an island in europe and we have all these dangerous countries all around us like Liechtenstein oh. wants to attack us all the time <laughs> don't, don't worry daniel now 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 you're not part of um eu we'll we'll come and help you oh there you go thank you very much <laughs> so i read i read somewhere i read somewhere that the uh 
Swiss army and the Swiss army men were uh, very reliable and very popular mercenaries throughout the centuries, and hence the, the military history. Yes, that, that, that's very true. Um, I, I think for, for hundreds of years, actually, they were very, very sought after um, the, as, as mercenaries all over the world. Yeah. I was reading here in Portugal, I don't know if it's correct, but it says that in active, there are only 31,300 people in the, um, in the uh, armed forces. And to 210,000 in the reserve. So, oh, so <laughs> quite a lot. I mean, so we can easily attack Portugal then. I've always yeah. wanted to post the motion. <laughs> you, want, you always wanted that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's easy to attack. That's right. <laughs> so, it's, it's just a few. Sorry. So the, the last thing is we, we've got these six gnarly old men, and it's really funny. I mean, I, you probably can't understand, even the German-speaking people probably can't understand a word if you click on the link in there where they talk about their, their prediction. But we've got these six gnarly old men up in the Alps who, who try to predict the weather for every half year. And, and it's hilarious. Um, it's, it's, it's actually not always that wrong. Um, and they they base it on where the ants walk and how fast snails crawl and when the bees fly and which direction plants are growing and and all those kind of things. And then they make a prediction. And these predictions are sometimes very, very precise. So this year they said that on the 1st of August, which is Swiss National Day, it's going to rain. Um, so they, they'll pick out certain days or weeks where they make a very specific prediction. Of course, usually it was related for them to when they can go and get the hay in and 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 all those kind of things. But these are these are iconic um, folks. They've been doing this for I don't know, probably thousands of years if you look at them. Um, and and it's it's very unique. Unfortunately, I don't think you can translate it in any way that it seems half as funny as it is if you listen to it in Swiss German. It's a little bit like Groundhog Day. It, it, like the yeah. um, Punxsutawney. Exactly. Was this created because of the agriculture and things like this or not? Because I, we, have something, yeah, we have something like that, where there was a small book and all the agriculture, all the... When they wanted to see the, and everything, they just guided by uh, the, by this booklet. It was uh, very strange. Also, it was a, some people that did that as well with the weather and the moon. What contribution it could uh, get to the to the cultures and to agriculture? It was it is interesting as well. So it may be something like that. Could could be. I don't I don't know what the background is. I should look it up. Mm -hmm. I, I always I always wondered what the range of speed of snails' um, pace was. Well, was, the one guy explains it, so I can I can go ask him what sort of is a regular speed and what's the speed this year and what that actually means. And can snails be speeding? Fine for speeding in Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think with that, uh, John Carlo, I'm going to hand over to you again. Absolutely, yeah, and we get to the last part. Um, doing that quickly about corona here in switzerland just giving you a few figures uh what we had until uh, this morning eight o'clock that's the most updated one we we could get is uh 30 a little bit more than thirty thousand confirmed cases when we talk about confirmed cases they have been uh tested positively in uh, labors uh we had uh, since yesterday 50 new cases so it's uh, as you can see also on the graph on the top one uh, since a few days uh, or weeks, it's going down. So we are on a quite a good way uh, when it comes to uh, yeah uh, having uh, having positive cases. We had quite a um, high amount of deaths uh, with uh, almost 1,700 uh, deaths, which is an average with an average way uh, age of uh, 84 years. Um, which I think confirms to be mostly the same or similar in uh, in every in every uh, country. So when we get to the next slide, which is the last one, 
uh, a little bit about how we have lived these last uh, weeks or the, let's say the two months uh, with uh, lockdown measures. Because at the end of the day, uh, we have to say it was not really a lockdown as we have, uh, or as you know it from other countries, or as uh, Spain or Italy has lived it, uh, or France, which were very extreme uh, lockdowns where you really had to stay at home, you really had to, to be one hour, or you could only go out for one hour only if you have a written permission, which you had to... Uh, to write by yourself and print it out. This was not the case here in Switzerland. So from the first day, we always were allowed to go out, to be out uh, uh, without permission. So there have been, the only rule is not gathering with more than five people. That was uh, at the beginning, not even the case just afterwards. And uh, mostly all shops closed down like uh, bars and restaurants. So that was similar like in other countries. So only the, most important shops like uh, uh, the drug stores, uh, like the food shops, uh, they remained uh, open. Uh, meanwhile, everything is uh, in kind of shops is open. The hairdressers are open, beauty centers are open. I heard that in the UK, for instance, uh, I think it must be quite uh, heavily because the hairdressers is uh, supposed to be closed until uh, July, I think. Yeah. 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 My wife has learned to cut my hair. She does quite a good yeah. job, I think. So it's now she saving me. So I got to exactly. watch. I, I, I can confirm. I can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> I had to spending a whole morning watching YouTubes of how to cut hair. <laughs> yeah, and restaurants are meanwhile open and bars. However, there is a restriction of uh, maximum four people, and you have to go home at uh, midnight, which is also a little bit different in other countries where sometimes it's eight o'clock, sometimes it's ten o'clock. And school has also have also reopened uh, since the 11th of March, but only let's say for the youngest one up to 10 years. Uh, the rest uh, of the schools and the universities, they are supposed uh, to open on uh, June the 8th, so uh, uh, in uh, almost two weeks' time. Where also next to all schools, zoos, botanic gardens, the swimming pools, the the, the public ones. Uh, everything will be opened again and it will be possible again to um, come together with more than five people also in the restaurants and um, normally it should be a, a possible again to do some kind of um, events for up to 10 uh, up to thousand persons which will remain or what will remain uh, forbidden at least until end of august or all the big events uh, over 1,000 persons, and um, yeah, therefore, I think uh, the Swiss had quite a light lockdown to to, conf to, to come back on that one. Uh, there has been, like in every country at the beginning, a little bit the feeling of, wow, maybe now our um, health system will collapse. So um, on the other side, there was also a little bit of hectic, let's put it that way, uh, made by the mass media also. Um, and of course, it's a very, uh, that's a little bit my personal opinion, it's always um, easy to criticize uh, afterwards. Me personally, I think uh, our federal council, so the, the, the seven dolls, <laughs> they have done uh, quite an okay job um, by putting measures in uh, the lockdown measures by releasing them also. And I said afterwards, you're always more intelligent or you know also more. But I think at the time when we saw this corona crisis uh, coming, I think the government has has, has done a quite OK job. And uh, yeah, now we are looking, of course, forward, uh, like every country, uh, to get uh, in a kind of new normality, in a kind of uh, yeah, uh, rhythm again, uh, getting back to work, because I think most of us, we are still working at home. Uh, but yeah, that's it uh, about Corona and Switzerland. So um, Daniel and myself are thanking you for your attention and now open for all the naughty questions. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much. It was yeah. really a great presentation. I'm, I'm always amazed about the passion 
and the quality of the presentation. You, you just saw a sample from, I think, another presentation, and, and every presentation is even an evolution of quality. I'm always amazed. Thank you for that. It puts a bit, a, a bit pressure on uh, Daniel for next week in Columbia, isn't it? Yeah. Next week we have oh. Columbia on Tuesday. So if you want to have your seat, like and command I, the flag of Columbia. I want to have that one definitely, but it will be an easy presentation because everything will, every slide will be white, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So much snow and no peaks at all. <laughs> oh my God. Daniel, you have uh, to unmute. I'm sorry. There is a microphone up yeah. ah, Okay. I know. Do, you have. You will change your mind after my presentation. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to. Be easy. <laughs> But, but, but Daniel, you know, uh, as I said, the, the Swiss guys, they have to send everybody a, a bar of chocolate and you have to send everybody <laughs> a, a white powder, you know what I mean. Huh? What, what? Yeah, I don't know how to mention customs, but oh, that's okay, oh, yeah? We have coffee, we have coffee, flowers. Yeah, I don't know how you manage to, but it's white and don't it's think. a powder so it's okay, don't it's a powder, about, it's white powder. How to smuggle it? You know, we have yeah. Serbians and Montenegrins and all the Balkans guys transferring it through the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think we have enough people that work in cargo here that can organize something. <laughs> okay. Wasn't it Air France KLM where they crowned the crew with a lot of the white powder on board? Just you can, half you can a year send ago? me a ticket and I can go with the boxes to deliver every, everything to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fine. <laughs> Fantastic. No, questions. Questions to our Swiss guys. Swiss, uh, questions you never dare to ask. Today, I think, is the right moment. I've got a question to Gian, because um, how are the meetings of your airport are held? Are they held in Fr French? Yeah, let's say the, the official language is French, yes. And also the documentation, everything is, is French. Of course, we also talk some German, but officially it's everything is in French. There is French police in uh, French regulations. There's really everything. It's but that's related to the territory, and uh, yeah, I, we are well, 400 from people. From perspective, it's also French um, regulation, is it? From the what perspective? From a cargo handling perspective, it's also um, French regulation. Yeah, then it's it's really starting interesting because you know that we have two uh, airport codes. It's BSL yeah. uh, for Switzerland and MLH for for France. So um, we work with Swiss traffic rights, but uh, um, we have the Swiss sector and the Swiss sectors are the Swiss company as per the Swiss law anyway. So they have to adhere, let's say, to some when it comes to. Uh, uh, infrastructural regulations. Uh, of course, then we have to apply the French regulations, which at the end of the day, and uh, Daniel mentioned it, uh, we apply already a lot of EU regulations. So in some cases, it's not a big difference. Um, however, uh, yeah, the, the, the Swiss companies, they then apply their own rules uh, anyway in their own setups. And it, it's funny, this some goes because there is, a, let's say, um, 75% of the people working at the airport is coming from France. 75%. However, uh, it's uh, exactly the uh, the other way around. We have uh, mostly Swiss companies, and, and and the Swiss companies are doing uh, are doing the uh, the business. So it's uh, the, the most of the business is related to that. And when it comes to passenger figures, then we can say that 50% of the uh, travelers are from and to Switzerland, 25 from France and 25 from uh, Germany. Okay. I have a question. So you, you said that, uh, you know, the Switzerland is made of 26 cantons and all the cantons are uh, have their own specifics, their own mini cultures and everything. So do you, uh, do you like make jokes of to the 
uh, Swiss, uh, German Swiss make jokes of French Swiss and French Swiss make jokes of Italian Swiss. Do you have it like that? For example, we make jokes about Bosnians and about Montenegrins. Do you have this like jokes related to other uh, parts of Switzerland? We we do. Um, we first we make jokes about Germans and Austrians, and then we resort to jokes about other people in Switzerland. Um, like I said at the beginning, sort of there's this rivalry between, for example, Basel and Zurich, right? We also have what we call the the Rösti Graben, and Rösti is one of our dishes that we have. I think is even on the picture, um, and Graben is like a, a trench, right? So we've got a, a trench between the German part and the and the French speaking part almost where we 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 clash a little bit, you know, different cultures that come upon each other. So absolutely we do. Um, yes, down to the specific levels of of even different valleys or cantons. Um, but but like I said, first we laugh about the Germans and the Austrians. You know what thank, the funny thing is, Daniel? You very much. We've got something similar called the Weißwurst um, border. Okay. Oh yeah. With Bayern. Yeah, with Bayern. 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 Okay. That's the Weiss, the equator of uh, white sausages. So south of it, we said, north of it, no, you don't. But even if you know there's things like, yeah, the Swiss are always punctual. Well, that's applying to the Swiss German because, uh, you know, related to Germany and everything. When you ask a uh, uh, Swiss from uh, the Italian part or the, from the French part to be punctual, well, probably they won't, uh, they won't be late uh, for sure. <laughs> I the one thing question. I'm fascinating, the, your tax system is differs, your income tax differs from, is that from county to county or municipality to municipality? It's, no. yeah, it's even, so our municipality level, so we've got, we have the, the overall, the federal tax, and then we have the local tax, and, and the tax rate, uh, it really changes, I mean, just five kilometers down the road, the tax rate is different, and 10 kilometers that way, the tax rate is different again. Um, it, it really does change from, yeah, municipality to municipality. Uh, what's the logic? Right. Is that to enforce really. competition or? Well, I'm, I'm not even sure if it is. I'm not sure what the logic is, but there's, you know, what we do have is also a system where certain areas, if they collect a lot of taxes, so for example, in my town, we have um, a, a big taxpayer in Dow Chemical. They have their European headquarters here, right? So we have quite a low tax rate, but still get a lot of money. So we give some of our tax money to some of the other municipalities that don't quite have as much. And the same thing is, I think, between the cantons where there's sort of an, an equalizer. But but I don't know what the logic is. Maybe, Giancarlo, do you know why? Uh, well, it's for sure. You have to know about Switzerland and that... Uh, uh, the, 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 the ground, how Switzerland, uh, it's built up. I don't know how to say in English. Maybe, Daniel, you can help me out. The federalism. Um, federalism, kind of, so, something with federalism. Exactly. No, what I want to say is that, uh, of course, we believe in unity as, as Switzerland, but uh, the Swiss people also very much believe that they have to be able to take own decision on municipality level, on canton level, and which sometimes uh, brings us to some difficulties because also during this uh, lockdown process, there have been, or the, the, the releasing processes for schooling, for instance, you can uh, go for sure. And I have friends, they told me, well, in this school, they do it like that. In the other school, they do it like that. And in one school, they have shield protections. In the other school, they ask them to wash hands. In some yeah, other school, cool. they need to keep the, the two meters. Uh, in other school, the one meter is okay. One. So no, everybody two, two. decides uh, differently and uh, based on their own, which is in one part or in, in, in on one side, it makes sense because you take decisions based on your situation. And so maybe the, the, the overall decision uh, might not fit to everyone. So you adjust it to what you need. But for instance, also schooling is different. Whereas, for instance, English is the first uh, foreign language you, you learn in one city, uh, maybe, as Daniel said, five kilometers away, and you move uh, away to another city or to another uh, municipality, the school system is completely a different one. 
And this is, of course, very, very uh, special. And on the business side, of course, this municipality, they use it to attract also companies. So it's uh, a lot of uh, multinational companies, also like Roche, they have the uh, next to Basel, of course, where they pay a lot of taxes because, of course, they have they have people and, and buildings and, and production in Basel. But uh, their uh, head office is somewhere in inner Switzerland uh, in, uh, and in some you know, completely on the countryside because because they have the lowest uh, uh, one of the lowest uh, taxation in uh, Switzerland. It's interesting because in Germany we do have the municipalities determining the um, Gewerbesteuer, which is the, the, the uh, corporate tax. So that is determined on the um, municipality level. But when it comes to income tax, that's just uh, countrywide. It, 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 and it is crazy. I mean, you know, the differences aren't small. If I take the example of the, the town where I live, which is one of the lower taxed areas in Zurich, um, compared to, for example, the city of Zurich, the difference of of the tax rate is is probably right now about 35 or 36 percent that they pay more in the city, which is only 15 kilometers away, than I would pay here just outside of the city. So it's considerable differences. Mm. Okay. Which, which airline? Sorry. Yeah, which airline, no, which your lookalike is associated with which company related to our industry, Giancarlo? Sorry, can you repeat? Your lookalike is related to which company in our industry? Bud Spencer? Yes, exactly. Which which company in our industry was he related or affiliated with? He was, he was the founder of Mistral Air. Or not maybe not the founder, but he was related to Mistral Air. Okay, that one I, I didn't know. I, I know he made his pilot license, his helicopter license. He's inventor of many things, uh, uh, but uh, Mistral Airs, I don't recall that one. But interesting, you just Googled that one, right? <laughs> no, because I like, I like um, Bud Spencer a lot, and too. I like also this type of trivia. Yeah, interesting. Didn't know, although didn't remember that one. Yeah, Martin, that, they like, his, they like the, the punch he does with hitting the people on top of their head. <laughs> his trademark punch. Yeah. I, I like the humor, you know, this kind of films you couldn't do today anymore. Impossible. With his that's just, side yeah, that's just Terrence Hill. I'm just wondering if Daniel could actually, if Daniel could pass as a Terrence Hill. <laughs> I'm not sure. No. So the is, I think put on, put on a was and shave. And he was he was eating everything today. Everybody is a vegan or vegetarian, so that's why these movies wouldn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. I've run out of questions. Um, for those of you capable of speaking or understanding German, I've shared that video on YouTube of. Uh, this uh, Swiss politician who was reading out legislation on Bündnerfleisch. It's hilarious. Um, and even if you don't understand German, it's probably still funny watching because you can see as how the pressure builds up in this guy and eventually he just cracks out laughing. But what I was really missing in the presentation <laughs> was really Oli Hoeneß. That was not mentioned at all in the presentation. What wasn't mentioned? Oli Hoeneß. Who's that? No, I know who it is, but we only we, we only mentioned the important things. Ah, I see. Swiss tend to be very. Yeah, I heard uh, you know, Switzerland is one of the places for innovation. Yeah, it's known for innovation, and um, even a, Albert Einstein lived there for long. Yeah. Um, so, uh, did you 
I mean, you could have mentioned maybe one or two names who, who and and maybe I'm, I was relating to your presentation that is it the vocational training is is that the culture that fosters innovation in Switzerland? What fosters it? What makes I, I'm not sure if it's the vocational training or not, but but it, it I mean it is true, and I think we have one of the highest rate or highest numbers of Nobel Nobel uh, Prize winners um, in doing? in Switzerland um, at least per capita, um, and we have you know even now we have the whole blockchain uh, topic. We have a whole area, and the government's really supporting that, where we call you know sort of the, a whole area of Switzerland where innovation is going on just to study those things. Um, we have a very, very, or two very, very tech savvy universities, especially when it comes to, you know, alternative energy and those kind of things. Um, I, I think I think we're probably innovative because we don't have a lot of natural resources. We can't we can't go and sell coal or, or or other things. So we have we only have well, obviously we've got chemicals and chocolate and we could sell a few cows here and there uh, and watches. But otherwise, we only have, you know, what comes out of education that, that we can sell. So I think it's so human capital, basically. I think that's probably one of the main reasons. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's very interesting to know because. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, because we were talking about taxes, actually, I think your your tax system is quite interesting for associations. That's why about around the Geneva Lake, you've got all kinds of associations like IATA, um, the UN, um, FIBA, FIFA, um, whatever. Absolutely. I mean, and, and you know, especially organizations like that, when when we do work for IATA, for example, and we invoice them, it's the only company based in, or not the only, but it's one of the few companies based in Switzerland that doesn't have to pay VAT. So they're VAT exempt because of their international role as a trade organization, as a nonprofit trade organization, and a lot of things like that. And the other fact, of course, is we're a neutral country still officially, as our status is a neutral country. That's why we have the UN and, and many of those international organizations sitting in Geneva. Only thing is the bank secrecies will be lifted, won't it? They have been lifted. They have oh, been lifted. Been, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we still, I think the Swiss army still patrols the border between North and South Korea um, as, a, as a neutral uh, entity. That's right. I was talking, of, I was talking of Korean border. Um, it, it just occurred to me. The French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Germans, the English, of course, even the Italians, and to a degree, the Austrians, they all had colonies. Did the Swiss ever entertain the idea of colonies abroad? And if so, why not? Well, it, it, it seems strange. Pretty much all the Western Central European countries ventured abroad at some point in time in history. Um, when I was doing research for this, I mean, I did read that I think we've got something like 1.5 million Swiss citizens living abroad, but not in terms of colonies. I mean, there are nests here and there. If you go to Argentina or Venezuela, there's a couple of nests, you know, the America, Canada. Um, but I don't think, I, th I think Swiss is too introverted. I think we're too comfortable and worried about ourselves and and that we would go and colonize other places. Plus, look at all the those countries that colonize. They're all seafaring nations. You know, they had ships, they had trade over the ocean, and, and so they colonized Africa, and especially in Portugal's case, right? And they colonized um, the Southeast Asia in many places, or, or, or the Americas. Um, we we didn't have access to the oceans. We had to paddle down a couple of rivers before we got to the big waters. <laughs> okay. And yeah, maybe you were always on the receiving end, keeping the money safe. That's right. <laughs> Staying out of trouble. <laughs> Neutral, always. <laughs> right. So I would say... Thank you very much. Big applause Thank for the presentation of this event. And I think that was a, a, a great proof.
that we only have smart, upbeat, enthusiastic, and positive people in our community. If you know somebody who is meeting these very strong criteria, please let us know. We are already preparing for the virtual happy hour 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, .0, and 7.0. Be amazed for the future. So if you um, if you know somebody who also wants to be part of it, let us know. And uh, I wish you a great, great weekend because we just have a few days left in May. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you very Thanks much. Thank you as well. Bye-bye. Thanks for organizing this. Thanks. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.